Hi, I, uh, I hope you're well. It's lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining me for this reflection uh, this evening, as it turns out. Now, um, last week, if you watched it, you'll know that I offered a, a reflection from our caravan, actually, uh, in the Peak District, as we were away for a few days. And we were in uh, the Hope Valley, which is a great name, isn't it? Don't you think? A great name for a place, Hope Valley. Um, but anyway, as you can see, that we're, we're obviously, we're back home now. Um, but I've been thinking about this theme, this idea of hope ever since. Um, because, well, I mean, it's just such a central theme in the Christian faith. And we all need hope, don't we? Um, and I think the harder the times get, the more we need it and the more we are open to think about it. And at the moment, I hear a lot of people talking about their hopes for the future. Maybe their hopes that things will turn out well, or maybe their hopes that things will just not turn out as badly as they fear. Their hopes for their family and their friends and their loved ones. Um, and yet, I think that hope is a really misunderstood word, actually, because when our society broad, broadly talks about hope, I think it's talking about something completely different to the Christian understanding of the word hope that's central to following Jesus. I think when our society talks about hope, often what it means is a desire, a wish about a, some future state of affairs. Um, I um, maybe a wish or a desire that things will be different in the future, or maybe a desire or a wish that things won't be different in the future. But either way, it's a, a desire or a wish that really doesn't necessarily have any basis or foundation. It's a desire or a wish that isn't usually underpinned with any confidence. I hope are words that are often spoken not with confidence that something will happen, but more a vague wish than that, that they might. Now, Christian hope. Hope offered by Jesus is very, very different. Um, it's rooted in completely different terrain, if you like. It's rooted in a knowledge of how the story ends, of a known destination, a good destination, a good outcome. And it's rooted not necessarily in us knowing the route to get there, but in a trust in the one who is navigating us to that good destination. It's rooted, this hope, in the promises and faithfulness of a God who loves us. That is the basis of our hope. Now, to illustrate this, I wanted just to come back to something that I saw last week, actually. And um, on, the, on the edge of the village of Castleton, which is at one end of the Hope Valley, is this sign. And it says, let me just read it for you. It says, public footpath to hope down the lane, keep to the track. And this got me really thinking about what a lovely metaphor this is as we think about hope. Now, imagine, imagine for a moment I were to find myself in a place I didn't like. And I wish that I were somewhere better. Now, what I could choose to do uh, if I wanted to, is to set out without a map or a footpath or even any idea about where I'm trying to get to, beyond the vague wish that if I go somewhere else, I might find myself in a better place than when I started. Now, of course, it's possible that that might happen. It's possible I might end up in a better place, but I'd have no real basis for expecting that it would it would be just as likely that I would end up in a worse place. And I think that's a bit like our society's usual understanding of the word hope. But the Christian understanding of the word hope says, no, 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 there is a destination in life and it's a good place. And not only that, but we're not left in the dark about how to get there. You know, there's a path we can follow that will bring us safely to our destination. And not only is there a path, but there's a signpost that shows us how to get to the path. The sign doesn't give us a full description and map for the journey, does it? 
It doesn't show us exactly how we're going to get there. It merely asks us to trust that if we follow the path, we will end up where we want to go. And of course, we can't see our destination as we set out, or even while we're on the way. You know, there are too many twists and turns in our journey, too many obstacles on our way to see the destination clearly. But just because we can't see it doesn't mean we can't be confident it's there. As we set out on our journey to the destination, we do it not with some vague hope that it might be the right way. You know, that if we take the path, things might work out okay. No, you know, we set out with confidence that someone has been before us and marked out the way. That they've identified the hazards and they've marked out a path that will, if we follow it, bring us safely to our destination. The sign is clear. This way to hope. This way to your destination. Follow the path. And life, well, life's a bit like that, isn't it? I think uh, what I'd love to encourage us to, to see is that... Um, the Christian life is like that. The God who made us with great care. Um, the God who loves us with a passion we can scarcely appreciate or understand. He has a good destination for us. We can't see it. We don't always even clearly know what it looks like. But the path to get there is mapped out for us by Jesus. And his invitation to us is simply to follow him. He says, he says to us, as he said to his disciples 2,000 years ago, he says to us, come and see, just follow me. Literally, share the road with me. Share the journey with me. And let's see the good destination that I have for you. You know, Jesus has been and he's marked out the path for us if we choose to take it. Um, it's not always clear, is it? The path can seem to be overgrown. Uh, the next steps are not always obvious. The terrain can be treacherous at times. And, and let's be honest, the path doesn't always follow a nice simple route from A to B. Um, it often winds around. Um, it winds around the up and down terrains. It winds around the hazards. And sometimes it involves detours that we didn't expect. But we have hope, not a vague wish that we might reach some different destination that we can't see, but a firm and sure knowledge that if we follow Jesus along the path, he will bring us to our destination. This offer of hope is one that Jesus makes to each one of us today. He says to us still, come follow me. Trust in my love for you. Trust that I know the way to the good destination that I've got for you. So my, you know, my prayer with this sort of, I guess, part two of this reflection on hope is that wherever we're at on our journey, um, whether we're following Jesus or not, um, my prayer is that we would be able to place our trust in the one who is the way and who will, through many twists and turns, bring us home to the good destination that he's got for us. Or in the words of the sign, footpath to hope, down the lane, keep to the track, Mark Jesus. So can I just wish you a blessed evening or morning or whenever you're watching this. Um, I trust that life is well with you and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.